The expansion link bearings are another set of small and complex parts. There are four in total with a pair on each side and each of those pairs is handed. By that I mean of course there's a left and there's a right. I haven't yet included them in the Fusion model but there will need to be two ABA holes in the base of each of these bearings. As well as physically building the Loco in the real world, I'm also building it in the virtual world of Fusion 360 as you've seen in most of my videos. And this is proving invaluable in terms of helping me understand how all the parts are going to come together. It's taken a lot of thinking on how best to approach making these parts and in the end I plan for using a bit of angle. I cut a short length of 25 by 3 and use my belt sander to clean up one of the faces. The base is only 6.35mm across so I cut off a large chunk of one side and then square that face up in the mill. I carry on in the milling machine to clean up all the faces and square up the edges. My piece of stock here is big enough for two parts and I've deliberately left the long side, which is left to right in this view, oversize. This allows me to use a drill to cut the profile for where the bearing bosses will be located. The inside face of the bearing is not flat and has this slight profile. To achieve that I use an end mill to reduce the thickness of this face, leaving the base standing slightly proud. We can ignore that little strip across the top because that will be coming off. Hopefully you can see where I'm going now. I've scribed the outline of the two bearings on the stock and separately I've turned two bosses. Don calls out that these be turned from bronze but I've used mild steel and I'll fit phosphor bronze bushes to them. On each of the bosses I've turned a shoulder. This allows me to locate them quite snugly in the stock ready for soldering. Because it's quite messy with the flux and of course there's lots of high temperatures and flame involved I don't really like videoing when I'm soldering so unfortunately I'll just have to run through a series of pictures. To start I've separated the two bearings from the stock and just in front of the bearing you can see the little rib that I've cut from some 1.6 mild steel. To avoid getting solder all over the part I've drawn a pencil line around the joints. This should stop the solder from spreading. I've also put a little notch in the boss to help locate the rib. After applying some flux paste to the joints, I've also added some small little bits of silver solder, which hopefully will flow nicely into the joints. Another thing worth noting is how I've placed the workpiece on these vermiculite blocks. I've done it this way so that I can apply heat from underneath and hopefully avoid blowing those little bits of solder off. It would appear from this picture, taken just after I'd heated the part and the solder had flowed, that I've been quite successful. You can just make out the solder joint between the parts. I didn't do quite so well with the other bearing, as we can see there's a lot more solder around the joints, but I'm still happy with the result. I'll drop these into some citric acid and leave them to soak overnight. Next it's back onto the bench for some work with a hacksaw and files to bring it into shape. And again I'm using some silver steel buttons that have been hardened to help me with the profile around the boss. For the bearing bushes I turned down some phosphor bronze bar to 6mm diameter. Part off to length, centre drill, drill and ream to size at 4.5mm. And as always a quick check. I now lock tight the bushes into place in the bearings. 
although this time I haven't turned the little recess I normally do to give some space for the compound. I do still need to drill and tap the holes for the mounting bolts and of course the corresponding holes in the motion plates but I'm going to hold off doing that for now as I know I'm going to need to make some other changes as a result of me pushing that piston centre line out by an extra millimetre. So in the meantime I'm going to progress with the remaining valve gear and come back to mounting these later on. I also need to figure out how the hell I can clean those surfaces around the rib. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching.